now from the Falcons Radio Network. Mike Conti joins us here to give us a deeper look at this Falcons team coming in hot. They've, uh, you know, played very well down the stretch, Mike. They won out in L.A. last week, and it's got to be a confident bunch coming into Philadelphia. Well, I think it's confident because they know they can win on the road now in the playoffs. And believe it or not, in franchise history, that's something that doesn't happen uh, all that frequently here in Atlanta. In fact, the last time they had won a road playoff game prior to last Saturday was that Michael Vick game at Lambeau Field back in January of 2003. Wow. Obviously, much different atmosphere playing at the link compared to the uh, kind of wine and cheese crowd that you have in L.A. But at least they know they can do it. They've had a very good record outdoors on natural grass the last two years, so that kind of puts the whole dome team issue aside. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be a very good game. Um, right now, obviously, the talk up here is Nick Foles. You know, uh, which Nick Foles will we see? The guy who threw four touchdowns against the Giants, the guy who threw seven touchdowns against the Raiders in 2013, uh, or the guy who has kind of floundered his way uh, down the stretch here. Uh, obviously, um, no one knows which guy will show up on Saturday, but is that really been a big uh, point of emphasis in Atlanta this week that, hey, uh, if we can stop Nick Foles, uh, or is there somebody else that has been more of the atten- getting more of the attention? Well, Jay Ajayi has been getting all the attention because the Falcons saw him when he was with the Dolphins earlier this year, and he was the only running back to go for 100 yards against the Falcons' defense in the regular season. So at least among the fans and, and the sports talk radio callers down here on my station, that's what most people are talking about as far as a point of emphasis on that Eagles offense. But Foles, you know, it's interesting. Every Falcons player who talked about the Eagles offense this week pointed out that Nick Foles has been a starter in this league and has been a starter in playoff games. I think you just gave some very good statistics about what he has done in prior years in his career. So I think this Falcons team has a lot of respect for Nick Foles. What I'll be curious to see is, are they going to have too much respect for Nick Foles? And they might avoid the hesitation to load up the box and try to dare Foles to throw against them. Because I know the Falcons are very, very concerned about Ajayi and LeGarrette Blunt, who they saw last year in the Super Bowl, and Clinton, those Eagles running backs who can really give them a lot of different looks. Uh, how about the Eagles' defensive front? I mean, last week, if I uh, was to point out something that was a problem for Atlanta, it was dealing with Aaron Donald, Fletcher Cox, maybe not as good as Donald, but he's in the conversation, but probably a, a better overall front four and really eight for the Eagles. Uh, is that a matchup that concerns the people in Atlanta, that Eagles' defensive front against this offensive line? Last year in Philly, you know, uh, you know, different teams, but uh, they really dominated the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the ball. They sure did, and they held that Falcons offense to season lows and everything last year, and that was a really, really good Falcons offense, one of the top ten offensive years all time in the NFL. Um, Yes, it is a concern because, remember now, the Falcons are starting Ben Garland, who is kind of a a jackknife player, uh, or a Swiss Army knife, I should say. (laughs) He plays center, he plays some uh, defensive tackle, plays some defensive end. I mean, they kind of use him as a utility player. Well, now he's been thrust into a starting role at left guard because Andy Levitri was placed on injured reserve two weeks ago. And he, you're absolutely right, Mike. He really struggled against Aaron Donald, but everyone struggles against Aaron Donald. Falcons are vulnerable in the middle of that offensive line with their guards, especially Wes Schweitzer, who's essentially a rookie this year. He's a second-year player, but he didn't play last year. He's had his hands full at times. And uh, Alex Mack, who's a Pro Bowl center, an all-pro center, uh, it's not the same Alex Mack that we saw last year, and he's been dealing with injury problems. So that that is a huge, huge point of concern. I think what you're going to see, Mike, is the Falcons are going to try to get the ball out quickly and to the outside, and that's where the running backs, Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman, will really come into play in the pass game. I also think they'll use a fullback a lot, Derek Coleman, to try to chip and just give a little bit of help. But you're right. I mean, L.A. was uh, so dominant on the defensive front last Saturday that the Falcons could not run play action because they didn't have enough time to block for it. And if they can't set up the play action in Philadelphia tomorrow, that's going to be a big problem. 
Uh, Mike Conti, the Falcons Radio Network, the Eagles and Falcons tomorrow here on 97.3 ESPN. Uh, Julio Jones last year, 10 catches, 130-plus yards against this Eagles team. The secondary is a little bit of an enigma because that was the weak spot coming in. They made the trade for Darby, then he got hurt, then other guys kind of stepped up, and then towards the end they played the Rams, they played the Seahawks, they had some problems, the Giants uh, ripped them apart, and then they kind of settled in. I think Foles' struggles overshadowed, so – I don't know what to expect from this Eagles secondary, but do you anticipate that Julio Jones uh, will be a big part of the game plan? I'm sure that he always is, but do do they like this matchup against a smaller Eagles secondary? I think they like the matchup, but again, the problem is, can they block long enough to set up a downfield shot to Julio? And I'm not sure if they can. Julio this year has not been healthy. Uh, He's missed games when he's played. He takes himself out a lot because he's just always dealing with some kind of injury. He's dropped a ton of passes. Uh, in fact, he's second in the league in drop balls. And remember, last year, Mike, you're right. I mean, he statistically, he had a very good game against Philadelphia. He also dropped a lot of passes in that game last year. So, yeah, I mean, Julio will be a huge part of the game plan, but whether or not they'll be able to execute and get some downfield shots to Julio, I think that's a huge question mark for this game. Uh, I think uh, one big difference between last year's Atlanta team, obviously the offense not as explosive as last year's team, but their defense, uh, would you agree, Mike, is significantly better? A million times better. And it's funny because the script has kind of flipped from last year. When they made that Super Bowl run, they had such a good offense that they really bailed the defense out of a lot of jams. So the Falcons found themselves in a lot of 30-point, 40-point games and needing to score all those points to win. Total reverse this year, total flip. You know, the Falcons this year are 11-0 and when they score just 20 points in a game. When they're under 20 points, they're 0-6. I think that's not really an indication of where they are on offense. I think it's an indication of where they are on defense. The defense has just been that good. And the Falcons' front seven is really good, too. Uh, I'm not putting them on the same plane as Philadelphia or Los Angeles, but Deion Jones, fourth in the league in tackles, coming out of that middle linebacker spot, and he's been really, really strong against the run. Falcons have done a good job with balanced pressure. You know, Adrian Claiborne, Vic Beasley, Tack McKinley, all are around five, six, seven sacks on the season. Claiborne a little bit more, but it was really because of one game against Dallas. Uh, they have a really good rotation on the defensive line. No one really plays more than 50% of the downs except for their tackles, Grady Jarrett and Don Terry Poe. So no doubt about it. First-year defensive coordinator Mark Juan Manuel has done an excellent job with this unit. They are clearly better than they were last year. And quite honestly, this Falcons defense has won them some games. Five times this year, Mike, the Falcons have won a game on the last play because they've made a defensive stop. Uh, Mike Conti is with us, 92.9, the Falcons radio network, and the Eagles take on the Falcons. Overall, uh, how much this week has been made that the Falcons are, in fact, the favorite in this game? I mean, the Eagles kind of licking that disrespect feel that they were the top seed. Um, the Vegas line obviously has them as underdog, but I don't think it's the Vegas line as much as no one's picking the Eagles. I mean, everywhere you go, it's, oh, I think the Falcons are going to go on the road and win this game. The Falcons are going to win this game. So they, they kind of have that disrespect feeling. How much are the Falcons in tune with that? Not at all. Hasn't come up at all, I, and I promise you, I'm not making that up. It, it literally has not been discussed one bit down here because, quite honestly, I don't think the Falcons feel that they are the favorite, and I don't think Falcons fans feel they're the favorite. And, I mean, you're looking at it from afar, from a fan standpoint, I guess, and you say, all right, well, Philly has their backup quarterback. They didn't look too good against the Raiders. They didn't look too good against the Cowboys, but they were resting against the Cowboys. Uh, you know, looking at it realistically – Philadelphia hasn't had to play a meaningful game in almost a month, and they've been able to rest a lot of guys. Atlanta had a very early bye week five. So they have played, what now, 12 consecutive weeks going on 13 this week, and they're going on the road. You know, that's not a formula for being a favorite, regardless of what Vegas says or what the wise guys say or the pundits say. And I understand why Atlanta would be installed as a favorite in Las Vegas, but I honestly believe the team doesn't feel that they are the favorite in this game, and fans don't feel they're the favorite either. All right, Mike, uh, weather we don't know. It's been wild here all week, but starting with the snow from a week ago. We got misty rain, fog. It's been warm. It's been cold. They're saying it's going to start out warm tomorrow, but then get cold by kickoff. It's supposed to be like in the 40s early in the morning, and then in the 20s by later on. Uh, who knows? So 
I don't know how to tell them to dress or how to prepare, but it should be an entertaining, fun game. Eagles and Falcons uh, right here on 97.3 ESPN. Mike Conti from the Falcons Radio Network. Mike, thanks a bunch, pal. You bet. My pleasure.